the first question, who are your biggest mentors in the digital space and why? And, and if you want to qualify that and, and take it out of digital space and put it yeah. into more a creative kind of realm, that's fine yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah, so I, yeah, I've, I've been challenged over the last couple of months with, uh, with finding uh, mentors, to be very honest, you know, digital mentors. I do have people that I, that I kind of uh, watch from a distance and admire the work that they've done for various reasons. One of those individuals is Jack Kruger. Um, you know, in terms of uh, what he did at Old Mutual and at Sunlum um, with digital, I think he took their thinking um, from a very rudimentary understanding of what digital was to a fairly sophisticated view of the strategic importance of digital. Um, and that was a, you know, it was a very high level conversation, but you see it's kind of some, of some of the things that they did and that they thought about doing start to trickle down in the communications that they have nowadays. And I think he was involved very early. I think he was one of the first digital executives in South Africa appointed at board level. Um, for me, um, I think that's something quite, quite commendable. Um, from, a, from a strictly kind of creative and brand building perspective, uh, one of my mentors is uh, Tebe Kalafeng, um, who I've been fortunate enough to work quite closely with over, over the years. Um, and he's been involved in a number of kind of milestone projects along uh, along lines of rebranding businesses, um, creating personal brands, um, but just kind of marketing communications from a turnkey perspective. So I think those are the two people that I kind of uh, you know immediately come to mind. Um, I also kind of look out for a lot of guys like the A.B. Mokosanas of the world, um, who you know is doing a wonderful job at uh, at Ogilvy, um, and the guys from other Russia who are kind of coming in there as, as underdogs and trying to shake up the industry. Um, so I keep my I keep my eye on what's going on. I've really struggled to find you know specific. Individuals to mentor me, and I also don't really necessarily like the you know the the, the style of mentorship a lot of people go with. Um, in my view, mentorship should be you know, mutually beneficial value um, sure. in, in the sense that I should add value to you and you should add value to me. Um, otherwise, it just feels like someone is sponging or leech, uh, you know, leeching off the other. So, so that's my view of mentorship, and I'm still trying to find a, a mentor given where I'm now psychologically and mentally. What is the biggest lesson you've learned in the di digital space, and why? And again, if you want to qualify that and say, well, separate between digital and traditional, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, I think I think the lesson is is is, is, a, is a, I think it's a life and a business lesson. It's not a digital lesson per se, um, and that's uh, that's that's failure as part of the process. You know, I think digital is one of those mediums where, and given where South Africa is now in the adoption of technology and marketing, um, that you have to embrace the fact that you are probably going to fail. Um, and if you don't have that attitude from the onset, you're going to be too cautious to try anything. Um, and if you're going to be too cautious to try anything, you'll never get anything off the ground. Um, so I find myself, you know, a number of occasions kind of apologizing after the fact um, because I realize that there's a level of risk associated with this space at the moment which you need to have an appetite for, otherwise you will never be able to do anything. If you're going to try and tick all the boxes from a risk perspective and to try and mitigate everything, you'll never get out the starting blocks. So I think one of the primary things that we need to understand is that failure is an integral part of being able to do digital in South Africa at the moment. So just, I'm just going to ask you something. Based on that second question, yes, and um, it doesn't have to be linked to financial institutions, but sure, surely Europe and America are a couple of years ahead of us sure. on the digital kind of platform, yes, and surely they've made a couple of mistakes that, yeah. that we can learn from, or yeah. do you think that the South African market is totally unique, yeah, and that we can't learn from the mistakes the guys have made? I think we okay. can, yeah, yeah, I think we can learn from some of the mistakes. Um, what, I, what I don't think is that we can take those mistakes and assume that they're going to be happening to us here um, because of the differences in, in, in the markets fundamentally. Sure. So, you know, and, and, and I'll use a very simple example, you know, M-Pesa, which everybody knows about, um, you know, that was a model that was tried in America and it failed, it didn't work. Um, and at that point, they, the reason why it didn't work um, was because people had too many options as far as being able to transfer money. Um, and that for them was a mistake fundamentally based on the fact that if people have a lot of choice, then your product has to be that much better. And, you know, and in Africa, as an example, um, people didn't have the same amount of choice, therefore the product worked with wonders. In Kenya, you bring it across to South Africa and it, it, it didn't have the same effect. Um, so our environment differs quite a lot. Um, and the principal mistakes we need to understand, but I don't think we can take them and say just because it happened in America that things didn't work, it will happen the same way in, in, in South Africa or even in the rest of the continent. Um, so I think we need to be very sensitive um, to, the, to the idiosyncrasies of each country. Um, I think we need to be very aware of mistakes that have been made, but I don't think it can be used as a, a, as a guidebook to say this is what you need to do, do's and don'ts of digital in Africa as an example based on, you know, based on what has happened in the continent. Where do you think digital marketing will be in five years time? Um, digital marketing, look, I think eventually we will evolve. I think digital marketing at the moment is a fad. I think it's a bit of a, you know, flavor of the week concept. I think marketing will, will, will 
eventually find its place in a digital world. So I don't think there will be the term digital marketing in five years' time. Uh, much the same as if you ask any young person nowadays, um, if, they, if they're taking a picture with their camera, they don't say, I'm taking a picture with a digital camera, it's simply a camera. Um, when they're downloading music, they don't say, I'm going to download an MP3, they say, I'm going to just download music. Um, because those terms are often associated in very early stages of, of when things are not known to people. So I think my prediction is that the phrase digital marketing will slowly phase out and it will simply be marketing in a digital context. Um, and as such, the skill set of most marketers will have to evolve. Um, the understanding of the new kind of construct and the way people operate will have to evolve. But more importantly, marketers will need to start understanding technology more than they do now. So what are some of your favorite digital campaigns at the moment? Yeah, so I, I have a, a few classics that I, that I like to look at and kind of think to myself that was really brave of people to do. And one of the favorites that I have kind of all time, not really the current one, um, is Cornetto um, and a project that they undertook in, uh, in Turkey. Um, essentially what they were trying to do is start engaging people in digital channels, but obviously have their brand central to that and get people to taste uh, and sample product. So they went to a place called Taxi Square, um, very similar to a Santa Square setup. They went to kind of a huge projector, projected onto the side of a wall an image um, of a maze. Um, and the whole mechanism was that you, you know, short code, SMS your name to a short code um, and you get a code back and that allows you to be able to play the game on the, on the live screen. So essentially what you had is people with their keys on their phone being able to play Pac-Man and collect these Cornettos in this maze. And when you collected a certain amount of Cornetto, uh, uh, Cornettos, um, you got a short code to redeem a, a real kind of Cornetto in real life. So what they achieved from that is you started to see people kind of like buzzing around this uh, projection. Friends started getting each other to dial it and start interacting and they started competing with one another as, as naturally would happen. Um, but through that process, they started to illustrate the fact that you don't necessarily have to have you know, amazing technology, just simply an IVR, USSD technology and a projection onto a side of the wall.